having faculties of Islamic studies and education, local Muslims have now reached the point where they can uh, be, I don't think it's a good idea to, to do that, but theoretically they, they are self-sufficient. They can go from the lowest level to the highest level of Islamic uh, education, and at least a number of these faculties have PhD programs. Not all of them, but some, some do. And uh, they, yes, yes, that's it. Uh, this is actually uh, completely different from what we had in as late as early 90s, when in the Islamic community in Bosnia, which is the, the most developed in this regard, uh, we didn't have actually any PhD scholar in Islamic s sciences, properly speaking, in you know, Olum Islamia. You know, we had Dirasat Islamia, but PhD from Belgrade University, PhD from, I don't know, where, but, or Arabic language, Arabic literature from Al-Azhar, but not Islamic, Islamic sciences. That has changed, and now we have dozens of uh, PhD holders in Islamic uh, sciences, and not just from local uh, faculties, but also from, um, from Saudi Arabia, from Azhar, from uh, a number of other places. Uh, in terms of publications, uh, most Muslims in the Balkans still uh, rely on Albanian and Bosnian language and a few of these other languages to get to know uh, their religion. So local publishing industry is very important to, uh, to them. And j just to give you an idea, um, uh, I did a uh, detailed analysis of the publishing, a literature published uh, on Islam in uh, Bosnian language. Uh, before 1990, uh, we had very few titles a year, per year. Uh, and that was for whole Yugoslavia, not just for, for Bosnia. There were years, for instance, in the 80s, early 80s, uh, when we had only one or two titles, re reprint titles, actually. There were no titles. And of course, prior to late 60s, there, were, there was nothing between Second World War and early, late 60s. There was nothing published. And then again in the 80s, very few. Uh, now, since 95 until today, uh, something like 1,800 titles uh, have been published in Bosnian language uh, alone. Uh, much less in Albanian, but, but still. Uh, most of these books actually are textbooks for maktabs, which we just mentioned, and for like, religious education. I, I did some calculation. It's like over uh, 1.3 million copies of maktab textbooks alone have been published since 1994, which is really significant. Um, in terms of, um, there is a lot of translations, of course. Um, more than half of these titles are translations, actually. And the author that gets translated most is Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, uh, uh, Then uh, you have everybody and anybody gets translated, because a lot of this literature is subsidized. A lot of this literature is subsidized by various groups and jamaats, you know. Uh, but of the literature that sells, it's Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, it's Ibn Qayyim, it's uh, Amr Khali, it's, uh, 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 what's his name, Aid al Karni, uh, Sheikh Karadawi, these people uh, sell. Um, but then when it comes to this uh, subsidized literature, of course, Badiya uh, Zaman Nursi, Fatullah um, Gulen, um, Salafi literature, Shia, Shia literature, anything uh, you get. Bill Graham, actually. Uh, New Testament, you get it on your door. People come and, you know, um, ask you, knock your door and ask you, would you like to, to, to have one, uh, New Testament in Bosnia and so on. So this um, subsidized literature is something that we haven't had before, but is uh, very, very significant, has been very, um, well, very much present in, the, in after, after the war. Um, interestingly enough, we didn't have uh, much titles uh, by written by radical modernist Islamic more Muslim modernist and postmodernist translated like Muhammad Al Kun, which was for a while popular in the 80s, is not translated anymore. Besam Tibi, 
even Nasr Hamid Abu Zaid, for some reason, nobody is really uh, paying uh, attention to, to them. Um, as for tariqas, uh, as everywhere else, last 10 to 15 years, uh, there has been a significant revival of uh, tariqas, um, but it's still a marginal phenomenon. Less than 2% uh, of Bosnian Muslims, for instance, or Kosovo Muslims belong to, to tariqas because they were suppressed during the communist time. As you can imagine, communists didn't like Tariq, uh, Sufis especially, because uh, they, they accused them of you know, uh, fatalism, and that was something uh, communists could not, could not tolerate. Um, we have Naqshibandiya, we have Qadiriya, Shadiriya, some Mawlavis, some Khalwatis, but these are all uh, minor minor phenomena. Uh, and we have two, actually two kinds of tariqas these days. We have traditional tariqas, you know, which really uh, make you go through, uh, slowly, uh, through Sufi practices, Tazkiyah, Tahliya, and so on. And then we have something that people call Eastern uh, Sufis or NGO tariqas, where you basically, tariqa is more like an NGO, and uh, shiuch sh just pop up. Yeah. Overnight, and they proclaim and themselves. Eastern or Western? Uh, they are locally grown. Okay, okay. Yeah. that's. But the uh, leaders come from. No, they are local. Where well, they get their uh, shahadas or ijazats, I, I don't know. But uh, there is tension uh, between traditional uh, Sufis and these uh, neo, if you like, neo Sufis. Um, you don't have your own tariqa. Not yet. Uh, significant development uh, after 1990 was the emergence of Islamic faith-based uh, organization. This is something we didn't have uh, during the communist period uh, anywhere in the Balkans because uh, maximum that uh, communist governments would tolerate is official Islamic community that they will try to control. To have many of these uh, was uh, unacceptable and probably the best known um, uh, proscribed um, entity or non-governmental organization was um, Young Muslims to uh, which uh, President Izabegovic uh, belonged. They, they were first banned and some of their leaders uh, hanged uh, immediately after the Second World War when the communists came to power in Bosnia, in Yugoslavia, sorry. Uh, but then again in the 80s, when uh, as now mature people, they were kids at that time. Uh, Izet Begovic was 16 years old when he was first taken to prison in uh, 46. They were really, really uh, teen, teenagers. And then again in the 80s, when uh, they used to come to sit together in, in houses and they were again taken for, for mock trial. Um, that's about the manifestations of, of uh, revival. In terms of orientation, uh, of course most Balkan Muslims are traditional Muslims. They are born Muslims and they, you know, um, they will go at least twice a year to the mosque. By the way, we, this is uh, an interesting uh, thing. Uh, for instance, one third of Turks never go to the mosque. Only 10% of Balkan Muslims never go to the mosque in their life. So because Eid is an occasion where you go, it doesn't matter if, if you are more social, than more social, cultural, you know, then. And, but this, is, this also tells you that uh, religion is not really a divisive issue in the Muslim communities, unlike in Turkey, where probably people fight over uh, religion, you know. In, in our case, within the Muslim communities, uh, religion itself is not is not uh, an issue. Um, in addition to traditionalists, uh, we do have um, some modernists, not many. It's important group of reformists, and in the Islamic uh, circles, scholarly circles, uh, this is probably predominant still reformist orientation. We have some. Sufis, uh, some Salafis, and unfortunately some uh, extremists, you know, Takfiris, and, and, and so on. Um, 
In terms of who are the agents of uh, Islamic revival, uh, one has to be fair and uh, always emphasize that it is the imams of these Islamic communities, you know, that really people, uh, some people exaggerate the role of non governmental organizations, jamaats, and, and so on. But we have to, you know, these imams have been around throughout the communist period. They have put up with the, all the repression and oppression. And after uh, after the fall of communism, they have done uh, a great deal to preserve and uh, develop uh, faith in, in Balkan Muslims. Oh, then, uh, institutions, Islamic institutions like madrasas, faculties, they, they have been crucial also. Uh, then, of course, uh, students uh, who studied Islamic Islam abroad, they were very important in, for instance, you know, bringing new ideas, bringing literature, establishing connections with uh, Muslim scholars abroad, uh, and so on. And then come foreign agencies, be they humanitarian or fighters or uh, 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 mission uh, uh, ulema who came to the region to to promote uh, Islam. Of the countries that are usually mentioned in this regard, of course, of course, Saudi Arabia play a significant role both as government and as non-governmental agencies. Uh, Iran has been present since late eighties. And the uh, Iranian presence is very much institutionalized. They have institutes, they have uh, um, uh, public journals, they have media. Uh, that has been a um, um, source of some uh, contention lately. Um, Turkey was not actually very much present until very recently, until late uh, 2000s. You know, throughout the war, Turkey was in its own problems. And only with the uh, AKP in government, and actually uh, Dr. Ahmed Abutolu as Minister of Foreign Affairs, then we uh, tend to see more, more, um, more Turkish presence in, in the region. Uh, and since then, it has been very, very uh, significant. Uh, of course, when it comes to Turkey, there is one uh, big problem. You know, uh, ambitions are very high, very big. But uh, you know, means and resources are nowhere close to to match those those ambitions. This is this is the problem. You know, uh, Turks come and they get enthusiastic about uh, local uh, needs and problems. But then, when it comes to implementation and realization, it proves, proves to be a bit more difficult. Uh, second last thing I want to talk about is the what are the specificities of um, uh, Islamic practices or tradition of the Balkan Muslims, uh, because um, there has been a lot of talk about Balkan, uh, Bosnian Islam or Balkan Islam or European Islam. Uh, uh, one of our professors, who uh, uh, who some of you know, uh, Professor Fikret Kartic, uh, has tried to identify actually what are the what are these um, uh, elements of Islamic tradition of the Bosnian. Muslims, and that goes mostly, as you will see, for other Balkan Muslims. And he, he found out the following six elements. One, they are all Sunni Muslims, Maturidi, Madhab in uh, Hanafis, belonging to, um, you know, a number of Sufi orders. And um, that's one thing, so Sunni, Sunni uh, Islam. Second, uh, their culture, the Islamic culture is Ottoman uh, Islamic culture, and one of uh, one very important component of our aspect of that culture is to have uh, institutionalized uh, religious authority. Okay, uh, muftis in the Ottoman state were state officials. Uh, madrasas were part of the, you know, although private initiative, but still mudarrises. Uh, you know, professors there were uh, appointed uh, and by and linked to to the state. So this is very important when we come to one of the later uh, aspects. Then we have presence of some Islamized, pre-Islamic uh, religious practices. You know, in Bosnia we have a 
very um, popular uh, practice of going to certain places where we offer uh, dua. There is there are no mosques there. There are no and most people say this is pre-Islamic actually places where people Bosnians uh, before the arrival of Islam used to go and pray and this is a, has just been Islamized. So we go now and pray zuhur and offer dua. Uh, there is nothing else, but still it's uh, pre-Islamic. Uh, but that's not very significant. Now, the tradition of Islamic reformism sin since mid-19th century is very significant uh, feature of uh, Islam in the Balkans. Because the first encounter of um, Muslims there with modernity was actually in the late Ottoman times through Ottoman reforms. And since then, uh, there have been attempts to reform Islamic thought, and, and that has been very much uh, featured since since then. Um, and in the 20th century, has become, as as he's, as Professor Fikret says, official intellectual tradition uh, in interpreting Islam in the region. Very important feature is also the institutionalization of Islamic religious authority in the form of Islamic communities. Let me say something about this. In the Balkans, in every country, we have something called uh, Islamic community. That is organization which is non-governmental, but it's not an ordinary NGO. Uh, suppo supposedly, all Muslims belong to it. They run it autonomously from the state or from any outside uh, authority. They usually have two tracks of leadership within a religious uh, Islamic community. Uh, religious authorities like imams, chief imams, muftis, and probably uh, grand mufti or chief mufti uh, at the top, which is mostly appointed by the higher authority. And then we have administrative and managerial side, you know, boards of mosques, boards of uh, regional branches, which are civilians, and these are elected. So you have this, uh, these organizations. Uh, what is significant uh, about them, in addition to being autonomous from the state, from the government, is that they are, uh, in most of these Balkan countries, uh, self-sustainable in terms of fun, uh, operational uh, funding. Um, for instance, in Bosnia, uh, we can pay the, 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 the salaries of our, not that we can pay, we do pay, you know, uh, salaries of our imams, of our teachers in madrasas, uh, at the faculties, this is all locally raised. So this, this is very important because no one can come and say, well, you know, I'm going to cut off the funding if you don't. That's not the case in all the places. In Albania, in Bulgaria, they are very much dependent on outside uh, funding, and that, that's obviously uh, causing some, some problems. Finally, uh, leaving Islam in a secular state has been the feature of uh, Islam in most uh, Balkan states since the departure of Ottomans, which is at least one year, one century uh, now. In the end, let me say something about ethnic cleansing and genocide. Uh, yes, I'm, I'll be quick, okay? Um, we all know about it. I just wanted to underline that actually uh, survival has become a major theme in the collective uh, efforts and memories and identities of Balkan Muslims. Uh, I mean, of course, it's nowhere close to what Holocaust is for uh, Jewish people, but for Bosnian Muslims, for instance, and for Kosovo uh, Albanians, the experience of genocide and ethnic cleansing has become a cornerstone of their uh, modern modern uh, identity. Um, in conclusion, um, it has been a whole century since Ottomans left Balkans for good, and since then Muslim communities have been 
trying to adjust to radically changing um, situations in an effort to remain most Muslims faithful to their religion and to become or remain acceptable to their uh, neighbors and wider European uh, community. Um, yearning for security, prosperity and freedom they are very much focused on joining NATO and the EU, but being committed to, committed to Islam, they try to stay in touch with, with the Ummah. Um, at the moment, this double orientation, if you like, seems to be working, but how sustainable uh, it is remains to be, uh, to be seen. Uh, the one big fear of Balkan Muslim communities is the isolation. You know, because uh, Balkan Muslims know if they get isolated both from uh, Europe and from the Muslim world, then um, locally it becomes very difficult, at least for some of them, to, uh, to survive and to preserve their religious uh, identity. Uh, on a positive note, uh, as many people have observed, um, after a almost a century, Balkan Muslim communities, or at least some of them, have again become uh, political factors uh, which play very important role in any political deals that are made in the region. You know, it's impossible now to imagine uh, any uh, anything significant happening in the region without uh, Muslims in Albania, with, without Muslims in Bosnia or Kosovo having uh, important say in, in those those uh, decisions. Of course, things are different in Serbia, in Bulgaria, in some other uh, in some other countries, but still for the first time after almost a, a whole century, uh, Muslims in the Balkans are again uh, decision, decision made, important uh, decision makers. Uh, let me stop here and uh, give you an opportunity to raise some, some questions. Thank you very much for your Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed, for this, um, I'm sure, very um, informative, detailed, 